this is getting a bit too surreal for me. I think it's about time I went and had a chat about some wargaming. Yeah. Hello again everybody and welcome to Wargaming Chat. I'm still Brian Smith and this is my Phantom Mug. Today I was hoping to discuss what we don't often do in Wargaming, well maybe you do but we never used to for many years and that's diversity of troops in Wargaming. Uh, once upon a time when we were all a lot younger we used to just have very defined armies such as British versus Germans, or Germans versus Russians, or Australians, or Marine, US Marines versus Japanese, and so on. But uh, over the last few years, my friends and I have been um, doing a lot of different troop types, just to, uh, as an excuse to paint different figures, really, for a bit of fun, whether it was Napoleonic or Ancients, or as we've currently been doing the last couple of years, World War II. What we've been doing in our current games is looking at the actual units that could be fighting on either side as auxiliaries or their allies and uh, we've come up with some very interesting historical notes and uh, that's why at the moment we've got uh, Russians fighting Germans in Eastern Europe but the allies of both sides are very interesting especially the German allies and uh, what we looked at is uh, just the small subgroups that were quite substantial uh, when you compare them to other armies, and, um, that doesn't make any sense, does it? All right, well, what we looked at was, even though the Germans wanted to create a master race, it's still surprising how many of the uh, so-called lesser races they were happy to employ in their, their greater army. One of my favourite examples, um, which started me into the diversity thing, was um, the... SS Hanshar Division that the Germans formed over in the Balkans. Um, they were mostly mountain troops and they were all recruited from the, the Muslim population over there because then as now there was always a lot of tension between the Christian and, and Muslim groups over there and the Muslim um, peoples over in the Balkans saw that uh, allying themselves with the Germans would give them some sort of uh, force in the future that they could uh, assert their own you know, place in the Balkan area and um, I think Himmler helped to set them up, they were completely formed under the, the SS banner and um, they even had a, a Grand Mufti come in from Turkey to uh, give his blessing to the whole force and there were tens of thousands of them and they were very successful in uh, anti-partisan activities and that sort of thing and um, I, was, I thought, well, that should be a fairly interesting conversion from standard uh, German figures. All I have to do, basically, is to um, craft some fezzes for them because they're one of the few forces in World War II that wore fezzes, just field grey fezzes with the German eagle and everything on them. So uh, what I did was just um, got some of the two-part resin putty and... Uh, made some fezzes, so you'll see them in the pictures later on. I actually did a, an article for Warlord Games or 18 months ago about in their crafting area there, but um, easy to convert German forces into Hanshar just by making fezzes for them. And of course a year after I did that I found out Warlord Games sold Hanshar heads. God, what a coincidence. But nonetheless it was cheap and easy to make my own fezzes and yeah, just, just see what you think when you get to the, uh, the photos I've done. Uh, yeah, but no, they were very interesting minority to do and it was easy done using plastic soldiers already. Had. The Germans also had a lot of volunteers who were not happy with the communists in Russia and so you had at one stage a oh, quarter of a million Russian soldiers who had uh, more or less defected to the Germans and then were fighting under the German flag in German uniforms as well as small groups like Cossacks and Ukrainians, Croatians, all these people had their own political agendas 
but it was a simple fact that uh, if you didn't like the Russians, well, you joined the Germans. So there's an awful lot of small splinter groups that uh, Germany had as its allies during the war. Uh, also, the Russians. It's interesting to see what allies they had. I know at one stage after they uh, partitioned Poland between themselves, there was uh, indentured Poles fighting for Germany. Uh, and the Russians also gave a lot of the, the, the Poles the option you could either... Uh, go to the gulags or fight for Russia and so there was a quite a substantial few divisions of Polish troops fighting for Russia uh, and that's not counting the free Poles who got to England donned British uniforms and then uh, fought for the Allies uh, so if you do a bit of historical research it's really surprising how many small splinter groups you can get and that's the thing with diversity with your own miniatures how many different groups can you get out of um, one set of miniatures? My favourite example, being in a Commonwealth country, is the fact that you look at how many people wore the British style battle dress in World War II. Well, the British, obviously, and any of their Welsh and Scottish uh, regiments. You've got Canadians wore British battle dress, New Zealanders, Australians wore British battle dress, and then you look at the partisans in um, Eastern Europe and Central Europe who were supplied by the British. The British, of course, are naturally going to supply them with British equipment. So you've got Czechs and Poles and partisans all wearing British battle dress to a greater or lesser extent and using British weapons. So if you've got British, you can certainly, with a bit of minor painting or even just putting on particular weapons loads, uh, make them any force you want depending on um, your particular interest in a particular little part of history. So that's very interesting. And same for the Germans. I found that um, looking up just uh, the Eastern Allies for the Germans, a lot of them were wearing variants of German battle dress, whether it was uh, early war, late war, or even old Africa Corps uniforms. So wearing whatever they could uh, with the classic German steel helmet and all the German weapons. So uh, I'll, I'll show you later on as we get along some of the troops I've... Um, painted up differently or, and or modified. So um, what do we do? What do we do? How do we look at this? Um, well, it's a matter of research, isn't it? For example, you uh, go through your shelves and look up the old Ospreys. I've got a few here as an example. These ones are just particularly about Germany's Eastern Front allies. Second version, some great pictures in there and some great ideas about what they were doing. Um, Axis forces in Yugoslavia, that's really interesting because of the different people there. Um, I've got another book about um, Tito's forces, partisan forces, because partisans you can pretty much fit into just about any um, mainland Europe theatre of war there. And also late war, consider people like uh, Brazil. Brazil entered the war on the Allies' side and I believe in '44 they sent a division to Italy and fought up the... Um, the boot of Italy with the Allies, and the Brazilians had a very American looking uniform, so you could almost get uh, Americans and slightly convert or paint them to look like Brazilians if you wanted to do that. Apparently, they did really well, the Brazilians. So, it's a matter of just um, reading into the history of the theatres and looking for what particular tiny groups there are, because every war game you get, you're only going to have small forces to represent uh, the sides you want involved. Uh, in our war games, we've sometimes had three forces involved. Um, for example, in Yugoslavia, you had the Yugoslavian royalist partisans, who were obviously trying to back up the old uh, king. You've got Tito's communist partisans, and they were sometimes at loggerheads with the royalist partisans, because obviously at the end of the war, they both wanted to uh, wield power. And then you've got the Axis forces. So we've had war games where basically... Uh, the royalist partisans and the communist partisans are trying to take an objective at the same time the Germans are involved so you can have a three-way battle there to see what happens because obviously both partisan groups don't like the Germans but they don't like each other as well so that makes for some very interesting wargaming. Some other things for diversity of just wargaming to use different forces uh, you can use civilian forces not just partisans, but you can have uh, individuals almost in a semi-role-playing game where you might have um, a key figure 
who has to be assassinated or kidnapped or rescued. Uh, we've had um, your classic downed airman scenario where you might have a downed pilot and you randomly move him so both sides aren't quite sure where he is. That's good when you've got a moderator for that game. Uh, but you've got to rescue him because one side want him to interrogate, the other side want him to get him back to England or wherever he came from. So a down pilot scenario has been quite fun. Um, the assassination ones are quite good. We've got to take out a key, say, um, German figure, and he might just be guarded by some uh, civilian collaborators, which you can use partisan figures for. And... Um, Oh, look, there's no end of scenarios where you can employ different things. Rescuing female prisoners, because the Russians had uh, female soldiers, which is another one of my favourite ones. I've got a, a Russian army, and it's completely female uh, for something different, because getting into World War II, as, as children, of course, we all had classic World War II armies, I thought, if I'm going to get into World War II gaming, I want my forces to be not the usual ones. We've all got plenty of Americans and British and Germans and Russians, but what about some smaller ones? And so that's what I've been trying to focus on, is um, some more minority forces to add a bit more diversity to gaming. So um, what I can do now is uh, I'll show you some uh, videos of some of the troops I've got, and I'll just uh, voice over that and you can see what you think. Well, what I've got here are uh, my Polish troops. Um, they're metals and as I've said in my commentary the uh, faces were a bit uh, bland, a bit angular, but um, the Poles, certainly after the Germans and Russians attacked them, make a, a good little early war force or even as a, a residual resistance force if you incorporate them with partisans because um, the Poles had quite a large army and I think it would be a shame not to utilise them um, in various European theatres of war. What I have here is um, a mix of my Poles and some partisans to make a, a partisan or Polish resistance force and uh, you can see some with the red and white armbands there of the Polish resistance army and uh, yeah so this is about um, to add to your diversity of troops there's no reason why you can't blend existing forces you have together to make a composite force that is perfectly historically accurate. And here of course is just my um, entirely partisan force. Now looking at them I could have painted them a hell of a lot better but it was a while ago and every time I see different miniatures I could add to my partisan force so I don't mind buying the odd one here and there because um, I think I've got two figures out of the same throwing bottles, but uh, no, look, adding to a partisan force, it, it's great to have a, a poorly trained bunch of people. And here are my Hanshar division. Uh, some of them have got red fezzes on, which are their parade fezzes. They wouldn't have worn in the field, but I just painted them up just for fun. Uh, yeah, I made all those fezzes out of um, resin putty, and they've all got the tassel hanging down the side, and they've got a bit of an eagle and badge on the front, and I think that um, at, at arm's length they look pretty good. But, uh, yeah, see what you think. So that's the uh, 13th SS Hanshire Division. And I just need a section of them. They, um, they're not bad as a supplement to any German force you're using in a Central European or Balkan theatre. And here, of course, are some Eastern allies of the Germans. Um, they're all more or less meant to be Russian Liberation Army. The, um, some of them have got better grey uniforms on, but the others have just got any old hand-me-downs, which could have been old Africa Corps uniforms or even old Russian uniforms that they've just put German insignia on and used German steel helmets. Because um, I guess beggars can't be choosers when there's a war on and you'll use whatever uniform you've got in the storerooms. And, uh, yeah, they paint up really nicely. I'm quite happy with them. And here, of course, are my favourites, my Russian Women's Battalion. And I got them from Bad Squido Games, and I've got you know, quite a uh, selection of them there. And uh, they're nicely sculpted. It, I wish I had a better camera, but the detail on their faces is brilliant. They paint up really nicely. You can highlight them, and just the faces are just really nicely shaped. They're in the correct scale for... Females in 28mm, they're slightly shorter than uh, male counterparts. There we have just an infantry squad of Russian ladies. 
there we have a light machine gun squad there and they're in their um, camouflaged overalls sniper section there I like the redhead and there's a command group my favorite is the medic in the blue skirt oh, they're fabulous and here we have just some individuals that uh, can help to spice up your games um, I've got on the right the downed British airman who's not bad as an objective figure uh, in the middle I've got uh, like a a secret policeman say Gestapo he makes a, a good Gestapo figure if you want to have a, a key figure to capture or assassinate and on the left one of my fun painted semi-conversions is an officer of the Reich's Ministry for the Occupied Eastern Territories uh, as the Germans had uniforms for just about everything from SS officers down to postmen and here are some conversions here and these are all made from German Fallschirmjäger uh, two of them are painted up as Polish resistance and two of them are painted up as French resistance it's just a matter of uh, imagination and how you paint them up I could have done the uh, the French guy in the blue trousers a bit better but that was just an experiment with putty and I made him a nice bundle of dynamite in his hand but he seems to have dropped it and I couldn't find it anywhere but hey those four figures used to be full shim Jager, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out so that, that's the thing really it's all about making your own forces making your own armies and it doesn't matter what era you're looking at either uh, in Napoleonic times you still had partisans you had guerrillas in Spain on the peninsula in the peninsula war you've got North America seven years war French and Indian war I mean there's a fantastic diversity of forces you could utilize there and that's uh, an area of interest I'd like to get into next actually is the North American campaigns before the American War of Independence uh, but it's because you've got so many different Indian tribes alone and they all have a particularly different look which I find very interesting and they paint up really nicely so when you look at figures uh, look at suppliers because as I'll no doubt mention in a future video I found as I want to get better at my painting half the battle easily is the quality of sculpting of the figure now I found when I was painting up my uh, metal polish troops the sculpting I didn't think on the heads was dreadfully good it was just very um, bland just because they're 28 millimeters high because that's a scale I've been quite happy with the last couple of years and it was very hard to get the definition I like but then I got metal figures for my Russian women's army and the sculpting that was excellent those faces some of them just looked so realistic even at a tiny scale and that was from um, I got those from bad squiddo games over in England uh, Annie in the shop there was very good sent me my order very quickly a couple of times I've ordered things from them uh, she included a tea bag which was very nice I like Twining's tea even though I'm drinking coffee today for something different but yes uh, the Russian females you get from bad squid games they've got an extensive army there and all sculpted by Alan Marsh and they're, they're brilliant they paint really well I don't think I do credit to them when I paint it up but I'll but you would have seen some pictures of those as well but yes um have a look around your suppliers uh, other forces you can look at is for example uh, Romanians they had the fourth largest army in Europe during the Second World War you, you never see them do you you never see them in war gaming are uh, the Hungarians another credible force uh, fighting for the Germans and you can get them quite easily and I'm looking at in the future of getting Hungarians and Romanians as long as we're doing World War two for something different because uh, both those armies were heavily engaged fighting the Russians so um, yeah there's a lot of armies out there rather than your standard British and Germans that are really interesting with really interesting helmets weapons um, paint them up uh, in really different uniforms some of them look almost World War One like uh, some look quite modern so it's just a great eye-opener to the different sort of armies you can paint up if you just uh, spend a bit of time do a bit of research and you don't need to buy a whole army quite often I'll just buy a section of troops to paint up because you don't need a massive amount of um, a minority army in any battle you just want you know, a supplementary section like they're attached to the division for something you now like attachments you might get uh, you no know, mortars or tanks or something attached to your army from another area another army that sort of thing so you can just um, yeah custom build your army to suit the scenario that you're looking at 
And, uh, and that's why I think diversity of forces can be really interesting. And even if you've just got your standard Germans or British, as I've been mentioning, look at the ways you can paint them differently or just slightly modify them to make them represent a completely different army group. Hmm. I think that's pretty much covered it. But um, other things? Let's see. What have I been doing mostly this week? Well, this week I've mostly been painting Rocky Delgado. And here we have from the Tour Soldiers of San Diego Company a 132nd scale American World War II US infantry figure. I call Rocky Delgado for fun. I've had him for years just sitting on my shelf or on my computer that my good friend Michael gave to me. And uh, I didn't really feel like doing much, but in the last week I thought I've really got to get back into painting. So I, I thought I'd give him a go and just uh, have a bit of a practice to get my skills back into some sort of shape. And he hasn't turned out too badly, but I really need to do some work on the woodwork. But the face turned out okay, and yeah, it's a really nicely sculpted figure. As you can see, look, there's still a lot of work to be done, but um, it's all good fun. It's all about painting, practicing, and wanting to get better. If I look at an unpainted figure, I think, well, doing any paint job at it must make it better. No matter how poor you consider your own painting skills, the fact is, as long as you practice and keep wanting to get better and look at um, other people's images and videos, and you think, oh, yes, I can try that, and always experiment and always try. And uh, next time you paint, just try and do something differently, try different techniques, and just try and make it better. And I find that having diverse army groups lets you practice your skills like that without getting too, um, well, mind numbed into doing yet another dozen uh, British uniforms or something like that. Try something different. Even if it's just different shoulder patches or collar insignia, if you want to get that, that fine, you know, that's okay. But um, basically, yes, that's Rocky Delgado and um, I need a bit more work on woodwork. I've really got to do more work on, on the woodwork of weapons. I could really improve there, but um, oh well, it is what it is, and it's all really just for my friends and myself wargaming on the table. And it look good, looks good to us. I mean, if the paint job looks good to me at six feet, that's fine. I mean, I can't see eyebrows on figures that are 28 mil high. I don't know how many of you can. So, I mean, honestly, uh, my friend paints figures quite okay. I probably do a better job. But, you know, at six feet, they both look brilliant on the table. And that's the thing when you look at uh, figures, scenery, and just the game itself. Look, that's what it's all about. It's just an overall holistic sort of fun thing we do. And uh, I think all of us can encourage everyone else in the hobby to just get better and better. Look, I don't know about you, I'll never be an expert, I'll never be excellent. All I can hope for is just to get better here and there, improve here and there, and I think that's just something to aspire to, no pressure. Just just want to improve yourself a little bit each now and then, when you've got the time, because let's face it, we've all got real life cutting into our time, and uh, we can only dedicate as much time as we have spare away from work, family, children, that sort of thing. So, um, look, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like what I've been doing and what I've been discussing regarding diversity of forces. And uh, next time, I think I might do a video regarding, oh, I don't know, scenery. I quite like making scenery. And I'll just show you some of the projects I've done just to uh, doll up our wargaming table a bit. So uh, all of you, take care. Thank you very much for all your kind comments. It's very encouraging. And I think that's what we can't have enough of in this hobby is encouragement from like-minded people. So all the best and uh, I'll see you next video. Hmm. How was that? I think that went pretty well.